Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Municipal Council uh, work session meeting of September 23rd, 2019. Everybody, please uh, raise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please. Councilmember Coyle. Here. Councilmember Deal. Here. Councilmember Gomez. Here. Councilmember Joshi. Present. Councilmember Lombardi. Here. Councilmember Brett Hill. Here. Councilmember Sandowski. Here. Adequate notice, please. Adequate notice of this meeting as required by the Open Public Meeting Act of 1975 has been provided by a um, notice sent to the Home News, the Store Ledger, and the Sentinel on December 1st, 2018, and posted main lobby missile complex on that same date. Thank you. Uh, moving on to oral petitions and remarks. Uh, we're going to start from the list. Maria Orchid. Hi, thank you. Maria Orchid, 83 Jefferson. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right time to ask about the referendum. Uh, Specifically, you, you who, may who is, petitions. Yes. Okay, who is going to make up the tree fund committee? Would they supersede the environmental com commission? Who's who's going to make up the tree fund committee? Are, tree fund committee? Yeah, the referendum. The ordinance you're talking about, or? The ordinance? Yeah, this the tree fund. Oh, the tree ordinance. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, got you. That, that is the same, Mrs. Org. It will be the Environmental Commission. It will be the Environmental mm -hmm. Commission. Okay. On September 26th, I'm going to have the Clara Barton Neighborhood Block Watch. Everyone is invited to come at the Clara Barton First Aid, where we're going to talk about issues that involve the community. And that starts about 7 p.m. So everybody's welcome. Also, September 28th is the Fall Family Festival. The Clara Barton Neighborhood Preservation Committee will have a table. We ask everybody to stop by, say hi. We'll have uh, games for the children. Thank you. Thank you. Still from the list, uh, Walter Scotia. Walt Stoschel, 2118 Oak Tree Road. Maria stole my question. I was going to ask, who is our tree, who is the tree commissioner? Name a tree commissioner, um, because that's what the ordinance says. So you need to change the, the ordinance from tree commission to environmental commission. Uh, how much have we spent on uh, trees from the tree fund in the past year? How many trees have been planted by the town? I can find that out for Wednesday. Okay, thank you. Thank you. On uh, September 19th, uh, members of the Open Space Committee went to the freeholders meeting in New Brunswick to see the freeholders vote to purchase the Ferrante property at 1665 uh, Woodland Avenue. Uh, they approved that, so they anticipate maybe by the end of the year closing on the property. That'll add 13.2 acres of open space to the town. And I hear people talk about the town being overdeveloped and we should do more. But if I, I want people to think, go back 20 years, and if we didn't have an open space trust fund, if we didn't have the county trust fund, if we didn't have an open space committee, there would be 900 acres that wasn't preserved. And imagine how many kids that would yield in our schools if we hadn't taken the time to do all that preservation over the past 20 years. Imagine how many cars would be on the road because of the buildings that would be on, developed at, the, at that point. Uh, so things have been done over the 20 years. It's, it would have been a lot worse if we hadn't done it and there's still more to do. I also hear chatter about reopening, um, taking the Stelton Community Center and using it as a school, reopening the Stelton School. Uh, let me remind everybody that Stelton Park, where the old Stelton Community Center is located, um, uh, it is on the recreation open space inventory of the township, and a s school at the site would be a diversion from the from recreation use, and that is a violation of the Green Acres regulations, which do not permit um, 
properties on the Rossi from being diverted from recreation or conservation use without the approval of Green Acres, uh, the DEP, and the State House Commission. So um, it's, it's, it's not to be done. Um, there's other places, the uh, Open Space Committee gave the Board of Ed about 20 sites in Denison where you could build a school. Uh, so they need to look at those sites and, and not this site. Thank you. Thank you. Council President? Yes, sir. Mrs. Stoschel? Real quick, um, you had previously sent me an email, um, and thank you for updating us on the Ferrante property, but you had previously sent an email about um, doing some research as to whether this American Battlefield Trust would um, contribute to the purchase of the Shea property? Yes. Um, any it's, update, and does the town it, have to do anything to accomplish that? Um, I don't think you have to do anything at this point. Um, we did talk um, with the um, parks director at the meeting about additional acquisitions up there. So the county is kind of working on, on additional acquisitions, and I'll, I'll work with the county uh, on that since they're going to they're going to take the lead. They're they're talking to the landowner right now. Thank okay, you. and thank you for thank the council for um, your help in 2017 and two weeks ago uh, about so, you know your resolutions for supporting the um, acquisition of the Ferrani property does help believe it believe it or not it, it's a simple thing but it shows that the uh, that the township is really interested in this and the the, the freeholders uh, you know move on that when the, when a town is united to do that thank you. Council President, before Walter leaves, um, Walter, how many, uh, it's 13, a little over 13 acres. How many, uh, what's that zone there? Is that a one acre zone? That's a one acre zone. So we saved like another 13 houses. At least the 13, 12, 13 houses. And, and how big is the Ferrante, 16? Um, yeah, I think it's 16, Shea, 17. The Shea. the Shea property um, would be that if, if and that has, uh, one, two, I think 10 houses approved on that, at least 10 houses approved. Okay. Um, up, up there, it's all one acre zones. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still from the list, uh, Mary. Thank you. Yes. Hi there. Um, 45 Kenmore Road. I was here back in. Um, Actually, the first time, well, I sent a, a letter to Mayor Lanky back in May 17, and then you guys, I came to the session meeting on May 20th, and we discussed the fact that you guys were going to do something about the easement that runs between Sanders Road and Kenmore Road. So you guys got on top of it, and you actually sent out certified letters to all of the residents on Kenmore and Sanders Road saying that if we cannot obtain um, access to your easement, we will remove your, your trees, your sheds, whatever it is, your, you know, whatever is there, fences. So that was back in, like I said, uh, May. So, Everybody got their letters and everybody complied. They all had a fit because they didn't, some of, them peop, some of the people had sheds, some of the people had fences, so they removed them, but nothing has been done since. And from what I understand, talking to the lawyer from Edison, Michael Krepsky. Engineer. Engineer. Um, he has said that it's been in the queue so how long is it going to be in the queue, and what exactly does that mean? I know it's in the DPW right now, and does that mean that it's just there's more important things to be done? Because, you know, I sit on a property that just floods every time there's maybe two inches of rain, and I can't use my backyard. So I just want to know is when does the DPW put that on their list of things to do since we're going back to May and it's now almost October. And like I said, most of the people got the certified letters, you did what you were supposed to do, they removed all the stuff, but there are things people have told me, because I live across the street from them, 
that they said it's horrendous. That uh, trees have overgrown. They dump their oil. You know, when they change their car oil, they throw it down that sewer system. So there's no, there's obviously a reason why this stuff is not being pumped out regularly. I mean, you cleaned out the, the basins at the end of the streets, but that's all you did. You didn't do anything to go into these people's property that you said you were going to go into. So I was just wondering, when does, when does that happen? When does the DPW say, okay, it's time for us to put it on the queue? Do we have an update, Mike? I spoke with the DPW about a week and a half ago, and, and, and Mrs. O'Rourke is, is correct, and, and this is the, pretty much what we discussed uh, the other day. And essentially, we evaluated the site, we being the Edison Engineering Department, Evalu evaluated the area and determined that there is, uh, there are easements there that are active and in place, and there are uh, existing structures that go uh, between the neighbors, uh, in, in between, uh, I would say, the backyards of uh, the residents in that area. Uh, the letter was sent out, you know, uh, alerting everyone to say, hey, move these structures that, you know, maybe sheds, play sets, or, or, or fences out of the easement area so. DPW personnel can get in there and clean it. All this information was turned over to the DPW. They, they've told us that, that they're pretty busy uh, and they have not provided us with an exact date as to when uh, they're gonna be out there to take care of this. And that's, that's what I know at this point. Mrs. O'Rourke, I'm sorry, this is the first time they didn't go through me. I'll have an answer on Wednesday night of when they'll be out. It, okay, went, so it went straight to the supervisors of roads, so I'm not aware of where it is in the schedule, but I'll find out where we are Wednesday. Okay, so you have a certain schedule as far as what you I do. followed, as mm -hmm. far as like yeah, what's, I'll what's I'll important, follow. what's not important? Well, not what's important. Every, everything is important, but there's a schedule of work that's already um, scheduled that they're following. I'll find out where you are on that schedule. Okay, I appreciate that. If I could just make one last comment. I talk to Mike about this, and um, I know that Edison is having a um, very, very uh, voluptuous time on uh, charging people for um, tank removal. Now, I think it's, I think, a, a very good thing to almost alert almost every Edison resident that there are tanks in the ground, because I just had one in my house, and I, my house was built in 1990, a brand new house, and it was a house that was previously burned down and sat there as an empty lot for like 15 years, and the builder decided to just put a four-car driveway over it, and now I'm suffering the consequences because I have to have the driveway ripped up. So I'm just adding this as a little flavor to say I don't know if all of you live in South Edison or North Edison, but there's a bucket load of tanks all in North Edison and South Edison, and you're charging everybody a permit, including, you know, with the tank companies, and I just think it's, you know, everybody should be aware of the fact, because there's a lot of people in Edison that don't know that there are tanks in there from 1952 that were not even supposed to be in the ground, and they actually say on the side of the tank, do not put it in the ground. And obviously, when I called the township, they said, well, we don't have records that go back 30 years, so we can't even tell you if their permit was pulled. So I'm just saying, as a FYI, maybe it should be something that you should send out to every Edison resident, because Believe me, you're, you're, it's going to cost you in the long run. When you, whether you go to sell your house or you're dying your house and people have to buy it, it's just a FYI. Thank you, ma'am. Council okay. President, Mr. O'Rourke, be, Mr. O'Rourke, before you, before you leave, yes. um, just so you know, I've been bringing this up to Michael and, and Maureen, and I'm glad that finally you're getting some movement on it. And I had it on the top of my list of questions tonight for, for, uh, Michael, so hopefully we can get that resolved for you, that flooding issue. 
Well, the flooding, but I also think that you you, you deserve to alert the people in, in Edison. It's I think it's your due diligence to say to them, hey, maybe you should check. Like I said, a lot of these properties were put in in 1950, and they put them in the ground, or people had them in their backyard, and then they removed them from the backyard, but they don't know that the original right. tank is in the ground. And we're all we're all suffering. Let me ask you a question. When you, you yeah. did your home inspection, right? Yes, did I did. Did your home inspector ask that question? Some, sometimes they do. No, a, not 30 years ago. It was not asked. It was not asked. Today, and, they, and the title insurance people, it was not asked. Everybody, uh, you know, right. puts up their hand. The builder puts up his hand. I found the builder. He's like, hey, listen, you know, I did what I was supposed to do because 30 years ago, the, DE, uh, the EPA was not involved. Right. The EPA is involved in your life now. Yep. They want to know everything that You're you right. do. You're right. And you can't get, you can't sell your house. You can't do anything without this being brought to light. And I think, I think it's a sin because everybody's, I mean, you're not talking about $1,000. Right. You're talking 1000 to 25000 And these people in Edison are getting screwed left and right. Well, thank you for bringing that to everybody's attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're off the list. Esther? Esther Nemitz, 162 B. Fay Street. Uh, I want to talk about the proposed tree ordinance. Uh, and I'm going to say right up front, flatly, I am opposed to these changes. And I want to see if I can outline why. Uh, <clears throat> several years ago, our tree ordinance was redone because there had been a major suit uh, and major court decision. Uh, and extensive effort was made to redo that ordinance based on the information that everybody had based on the court decision. Uh, and I can remember there were uh, lengthy conversations at the uh, zoning board with their attorney. I think the planning board also. Uh, but the important thing to understand is when any applicant in town comes to the planning board or the zoning board, our planner, Mr. Bignell, always includes information in his reports about what is required of these folks to do about trees, whether they're taking them out or putting them in, and mostly they're taking them out. There's an extensive list of what the charges are, depending upon how many trees are being removed, uh, that whoever the applicant is has to uh, give to the tree fund. So there's a reason that we have a tree fund, although we haven't had tree commissioners for a very long time. I can't remember the last time we ever had tree commissioners. Uh, they haven't been touching. But we don't have them here, and we haven't had them for many years. Uh, and we didn't have our environmental commissioner for a long time either, because I know when we did the trees down on Amboy Avenue, and that was uh, three or four years, maybe four years ago now, uh, we worked with our council president now, who was on the uh, finance committee, who joined us to make sure that our budget for the trees was OK. Uh, I worked extensively with uh, uh, Billy Thomas from uh, Public Works, uh, who walked the street with me many times to make sure that everything was done right about the trees, that we had the right developer. We had a complete list of what was going to go in so that we knew that the cost of the trees was being properly taken care of and the choice of trees was being properly selected also. Uh, and we had some help from uh, the New Jersey Tree Foundation about that. Uh, but the situation is, we have extensive controls over what happens with the trees, and especially those that are taken out, and the requirements that the boards, uh, on the input from our planner, place on those applicants to replace trees or put trees in the tree fund. And there are people on both of those boards who pay very close attention to the requirements for trees. It is not appropriate, from my point of view, to have an ordinance that says, oh, well, all you have to do is you want some trees, fill out a form, and we'll come on your private property. And as long as it's by a right of way, we'll, we'll put in some trees for you. No, 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 no. Uh, that is not what the intention of the, uh, the tree ordinance is, nor is it the intention of the, the uh, efforts of our boards or the effort of our planner. Uh, from any point of view that I can think of, the troubles we have had with 
with people coming in and taking down trees uh, has been substantial. We don't have any way of handling that yet. We certainly need to find a way if we're going to handle something about trees, to handle something about how we're going to prevent tree people from coming in and taking down trees. And for years, we can never get them to do anything about fixing the fact that they took down trees and didn't tell us or ask us. Uh, so I am not at all in favor of this. Now, at our Claire Barton meeting last week on Thursday, uh, well, I guess it was the 10th, 11th, whatever, whatever the second Thursday was, uh, we had uh, a, uh, the uh, person who is now the, uh, the head of the condo association at the building right next to the turnpike who came to our meeting and said, did you know that the turnpike wants to take down the trees alongside of our building? I said, no, I didn't know that. So he made a presentation to our committee uh, explaining that his association, his condo association, was very concerned about the fact that they were going to lose their shade, they were going to lose their noise protection, and they had not been consulted about who was going to take down the trees uh, for the turnpike or the turnpike, whatever. Nobody had gotten in touch with them, and they were really not happy. And could, was there something that could be done to help them? So the next morning, I wrote to the open space committee and included Bob Deal, our councilman, who is the representative from the council to the open space committee. Uh, and I said to them, shouldn't we be considering as an open space committee, how we can consider helping these people. I said, not only do they have the turnpike right next to them, but there is open space that runs directly alongside of their property, up behind the houses, uh, up the hill up Pleasant Avenue, and there are major gas lines that run through there. And I don't know that this is not something that we should be looking at and paying attention to. Uh, I included on that uh, email uh, that I sent out, uh, uh, both of the uh, leading members of the co-op association there. Uh, the next thing that I got back, and I know you haven't seen this because it was only sent to, I believe, Walter and myself, uh, was a, uh, an email from uh, Larry Deutschman, who is uh, involved with the, uh, that condo association. And it said, I've gotten together with the folks from the Turnpike, and I picked out which trees they're going to take down. Well, I must tell you, as a matter of having somebody from a condo association get together with somebody from the turnpike and decide in our town who's going to take down what trees does not seem to be the appropriate avenue for taking down trees. And I appreciate the fact that the condo association was concerned about whether they were going to have adequate shade, adequate uh, noise protection. And as an open space committee member, I certainly was interested in what they were going to do on that slope, which is a fairly steep slope if you look at it. Uh, and taking down trees is not a way to ensure that the security of the slope is going to be maintained because I don't want to see dirt coming down onto the gas lines or the open space or whatever. We need to have very clearly delineated who is going to be in charge of trees in this town, and it should not be anybody. I certainly, and there's nothing in here, for example, that says, well, if you're a commercial entity, you don't get to come and say, would you please plant trees for me along some right of way. I could imagine uh, Rockefeller, who just is building a warehouse back there in Whitman Avenue, and another huge w uh, warehouse on Route 27, and in both cases, they've taken down every tree along the street, coming as, to us and saying, oh, excuse Esther. us, we know we gave to the tree fund, but would you please plant Esther. some trees for us along these right-of-ways? No, 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 no. Esther, your no. time is up, but I think if, if we can ask the engineer to clarify I am requesting specifically that you table this ordinance and that you have somebody from the planning uh, group and the engineering group and, and the, the organizations in this town, the administrative people who should be paying attention to the trees, public works, pay attention to what we're talking about doing with trees here. I'm completely opposed to this. Thank you. Thank you. So, Council President. Yes, Councilman. If Joshua. I could just uh, clarify a few things related to what Esther just said. We have, our fund, our tree fund has grown to be slightly more than $300,000. That's an enormous fund that can only be used for trees. So 
the intention behind this was, yes, there are trees that are being knocked down, but in an effort to also beautify Edison, we would not be able to place, if we exhausted that fund, we wouldn't be able to plant 10,000 trees, literally 10,000 trees on only public property. So the goal is to allow residents who are interested to tap into that fund because it's an enormous fund. And so if they tap into it, they can use the, they can use that money and they plant it on their own property. And this also protects the township from in the future having to maintain that tree. Because it wouldn't just be public works, you know, employees that are planting the trees. It, this way, it's, it's the citizens and the residents of Edison that are able to use that fund on their own. That was the entire intention behind this. And I, I, I have to disagree. I think this is the best use of the fund itself because there's no way that we can literally plant 10,000 trees on our 32 parks. Council President. Yes, Council McCall. I just want to respond to Esther Nimitz. Uh, Amboy Avenue, a conversation I had, Texas Eastern was doing some veg management they do every fall to the pathway next to the, con the, the 10 condo owners on Amboy Avenue. And uh, that, that's, being, they, that's on every fall, the veg management there. The turnpike that went out is lifting trees in that area. From what I understand, there was a complaint. There was someone homeless underneath the area there. The two trees that are hanging over the sidewalk, I believe are going to be removed or pruned. And there is a new fence being put up for Homeland Security for the turnpike. So some comments you've made are not exactly true, but uh, they're not removing all the trees from what one condo owner heard. So that's what I have to report from a conversation I had with the turnpike and a conversation with Texas Eastern. Uh, there was, that's all I have. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're off the list, Mr. Dyer. Bruce D Diamond, 74 Calvert. Um, item 11, Department of Law, item A. That, that traffic light's been up for six, nine months, I guess. Am I missing something? Yeah, I, actually, I, I raised the question, I, I raised the question in my mind when I saw it. Um, I, I think it was just something that either DOT or the county required um, just to, you know, an additional approval, but I'll check. So this that. is nothing new, it's just no, bureaucracy. Nothing, no, as far as I know, it's nothing new. Okay. Unless Michael wants to contradict me, but no, I don't think so. And then Michael doesn't look like he's contradicting me, so. 12 <laughs> deep, Department of Public Works. Are these the same two mowers that were 80, 90,000 two weeks ago? And what's different? No, Mr. Diamond, these are our older ones, and this is just the cab to close it in for the winter. So it becomes a plow. The cab is, the two cabs are 22,000? Are for, are for ones that we already own, not the ones we bought. No, but th this is $43,000. Two cabs can't be $20,000 a piece. That's what they are. Okay. Um, uh, I've ta asked before about the sidewalk, the lack of sidewalks on Talmadge from uh, the condos, the, base, the baseball field there, almost to Ethel Road. Um, I'm curious if we're so, so anxious to spend the tree fund that we can't spend, why aren't we using the sidewalk fund to put sidewalks in town? Uh, Maureen or Mike, uh, any plans on? No. But they, they just redid that, that the, some of the curving on that road. They put in these nice handicapped sidewalk, handicap accessible sidewalks. They planted new grass where there's no sidewalk leading from the condos to the um, overpass. And then from the overpass on, it's grass again. I don't understand why we can't put sidewalks there. You have how much money in the sidewalk fund? 
Uh, we, we can get that answer for you for Wednesday, but. You said what, Ron? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure how, yeah. that, how that can. I, I think that's one of the problems. We, we go off and create these, these penalties for things builders don't want to do, and we don't think, seem to think it out enough what to do with the money. Because the truth is the tree fund should go into the general fund, the sidewalk fund. If you're not going to put up sidewalks are, are, with the tree ordinance, are there restrictions how much money can be, a, a resident can spend on a tree? Are there approved providers of trees? Are there approved types of trees? Uh, Bill. In terms of what's going to be, in terms of the trees that are going to be installed, the the, tr the residents who can say I want a tree from the tree fund. Now, what what the I, I I've got the language right in front of me. What what it basically the the, the regime that we tried to set up um, was to, if you're a resident and you want to have a tree planted, you would come initially to, the um, the administration and say this is what we're looking at. The administration would refer to the CFO to make sure there's enough money and to the Environmental Commission. There is a typo in here that says tree fund. It should have been Environmental Commission. They will sign off and say, yes, this is an appropriate type of tree. This is a good place to spend this money. This is, a, this is a, an appropriate use of this tree fund. But it's in terms of the type of tree, no, that would be up to the people who actually know something about trees, which would be hopefully the Environmental Commission. They have an arborist on the tree, on, on the I, environment. I, I, I'm not trying to be a jerk yeah, now. I'm just yeah, no, trying I, to figure I, I don't, out how I don't, anyone's Diamond, making a smart decision. This was, this was a request was made to, to possibly use some of this money. And the idea is it's, it's in the township's sole discretion, and it would be a joint decision between the administration, namely the BA, who would, you know, if the Environmental Commission thinks it's a good idea, I'm sure she would approve it, assuming there's an, enough money there. And the only involvement we have is, <clears throat> meaning the law department, is to make sure that, that they're taking full responsibility. Once a tree's planted, it's on you. Um, are so there, anything happens. Are there requirements? What kind of vendors they can get the trees from? I mean, getting a tree from Home Depot is a waste of money most well, of the time. Mr. Diamond, we would get the trees, and Mr. Northgrave, you know, we haven't had extensive discussion about this, but there's only certain trees that grow in this part of the region, and, you know, the Environmental <laughs> Commission, I would imagine, would have some kind of um, list. And you want to make sure that you don't just plant the same tree everywhere because if a blight comes or something. So we'd be doing a lot of work with the uh, Environmental this, Commission on would it. Would this include decorative bushes, plantings, or that doesn't? Trees. Trees, real trees. Real trees. Will the, will the residents be required to water these trees? Yes, yes. That, that, that's part of it, the reason putting them on, on their property. Will there be an inspection a year later to make sure that, I'm not being <laughs> obnoxious now, but it just seems we're giving stuff away to people that may not be that responsible about what they got to begin with. Ultimately, though, I mean, I think that that's the whole idea is the, is the, the you know, while certainly the administration is concerned about it, apparently Ms. Rwan knows a lot more about uh, trees than I do, but I mean, the thought was that that was the whole purpose of setting this up for the Environmental Commission is to make sure that, you know, those types of things are uh, are addressed and that there are, you know, are we going to send out the tree police? I can't really don't think so, but I, I would assume that part of the analysis in the first instance would be, you know, are these people, if, if we plant a tree, is the tree still going to be growing a year from now? Okie doke. And uh, w one last thing, I, I'd like to say thank you to three guys from the tree crew that did a wonderful job taking a dead tree that was intertwined with the wires on the street. Oh, one last thing. On Calvert, I think I mentioned it to you before, Calvert West, the uh, storm sewer is, is, got, is full of debris almost up to a foot below the grating. Or is that still on somebody's list? Thank you. You need the exact address? Nope, I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Council President. Yes, sir. A question for uh, Ms. Rulon. Um, following up on Mr. Diamond's uh, question with, with regard to the sidewalk uh, fund, I know in the past that we've redone or fixed sidewalks in areas of a CDBG zone. Are the two intertwined? Are they connected? or? Uh, CDBG is federal money, and there's a certain, you know, areas that we can use and the sidewalk fund. We just need to double check. I think it's area specific, but I, I, I need to look it up. All right. Thank I can't you. remember. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, sir.
Uh, Crystal 14 Fox Road. I want to promote someone that's uh, running for sheriff. I can do that here. Wait, you, you what? What? But what about running for sheriff? I want. I want to promote. Uh, I, I got a brochure. I would like to read from it. Can I read from it? An election brochure? Yes, sir. I, no, this this it's a, okay. this isn't a political forum. No problem. Governmental. No problems. I apologize. Um. So I, I, um, there's a lot of people complaining about uh, Germantown. Uh, no one's taking care of it. Um, I, re I read this, uh, the story of St. James Church, Piscataway Town, New Jersey in the neighborhood. Uh, there's a small fund that takes care of the, the, the church. It's very small. I don't know why uh, uh, the town doesn't take care of this. Uh, we got heroes buried here. This has been here, you know, uh, before George Washington, and uh, I don't know why no one's take, taking care of it. Um, recently, I had a court case with uh, USA Today. Uh, I'm going to promote, I am going to promote an attorney, uh, Taylor D. Benedetto. He's an awesome guy. He destroys the opposition all the time. Um, the one lady, there's some ladies that usually sit over there. Uh, one of them's from the, um, I don't know where she's from, but she's not here today. A truancy, a truancy lady um, that's not here today. Uh, and she was, uh, to, she was able to witness when I went to court, the man from USA Today, he had uh, made many false uh, allegations. Even, even on the police report, he made some false allegations. And uh, I just want that we need to create a law, anybody that creates a false police report, or any fake news that it's a federal crime because it's got to stop. Um, he claimed the detective or a lieutenant sought him out, but when I showed cops the complaint, they told me it was a civilian complaint. No, no police ever sought him out in the matter. Um, he, wasn't, he didn't want to get me uh, arrested. He didn't want me to get any fines. Uh, my lawyer basically said he was on a mission uh, to get me thrown out of town hall. That was his only concern. USA Today, why somebody from another town would want to throw out an Edison civilian, I don't know. He also claimed I threatened one of the council members, uh, council member uh, Gomez, which I dispute because I like you. I have no problem with you. Um, you, taught me, you told me one day they use the Faulkner Act here so I can better behave. And every time I speak to you, you always take the time to speak to me. And I would like to ask you right in front of the TV, did I ever threaten you, uh, Council Member Gomez? Sir, sir, this is this is for public comment. It's not. Yes, the time I understand. You. I'm a public. Well, we're, I'm a public we're listening to you, but um, but it's it's. But somebody somebody made made a false and I, and, and 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 if you want to have that address, there's there's a if you have a lawyer, the lawyer can figure out a way to make sure that it's addressed in the proper form. This is not the proper form. If you have comments, council's here to listen to those comments, sir. Oh, okay, you don't want to answer that. Uh, it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with wanting to answer. It's got to do with asking the question in the proper form. This is not the proper form. Okay, I, I, I apologize. I don't, I don't want to start any trouble. Uh, there is there there is a transcript, so uh, there is a public record of him saying it. He 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 did say a lot of lies, so I don't believe him. When when, I just want you to know that, um, Councilmember Gomez, I don't believe his statements. I'm done. I got nothing else to say. And uh, those two people over there, they don't got to worry because uh, I don't got any questions for them. Great. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Motion to close the public portion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we're moving on to the review of the minutes. Uh, regular meeting of August 28th and combined meeting of September 9th. Any comments? Reports from all council committees. I'll start from my right, Councilman Coyle. Council President, um, this weekend uh, the Communication Committee worked on the Amboy Ave bridge area. We planted over 100 mums to that area, so I think it's come along nice. We had a large pruning event and uh, a litter patrol on that 
Uh, again, still working on Silver Lake, working with Assemblywoman Nancy Pinkin on getting that adoption taking place on Silver Lake and Woodbridge Avenue. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Councilman Dio. None, sir. Councilman Patillo. None, sir. Councilman Joshi. None, sir. Councilman Lombardi. None, sir. Councilman Sandelsky. None, sir. Okay, we're moving on to points of light. Um, just want to remind everybody that this Saturday, September 28th, we are going to have the Fall Family Spectacular on Amway Avenue from Jackson Avenue to Watuma starting at 11 a.m. On October 2nd, uh, Wednesday, Committee of the Hall will be here at 7 p.m. So that's at Wednesday, October 2nd, continuation of the Committee of the Hall at 7 p.m. Saturday, October 19th, uh, the Department of Recreation will be hosting the Harvest Fund at Thomas Edison Center uh, at the Tower from 3 to 6 p.m. And then the Trail of Horror begins from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, that's always been a very popular and great event, so certainly looking forward to that. And then on October 26th at Lake Papiani from 12 to 7 p.m. is going to be the Horror Fest. Uh, also sponsored by the Edison Chamber of Commerce. Okay, any other points of light? Okay, moving on to the agenda items. Uh, from the Business Administrator, resolutions A through D. Any Council comments? President. Yes, sir. Uh, to the administration, <clears throat> for the, the, what is the accounting for the tire tubes as they are installed? Do we have a process you can share with me? Or not today, but later. Okay. What the inventory control is. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, from the Department of Finance, resolutions A through F. From the Department of Health, resolution A. From the Department of Law, resolutions A through D. From the Department of Public Works, resolutions Council A President. through D. Yes, sir. A C um, on the Department of Law. I believe that's Menlo Park Mall. Yes. Correct? Okay, and what exactly are they, they want to have the whole entire area designated? No, actually, it's, it's the, the problem is it's uh, what they're really concerned about is the office building uh, that's in the back, okay. but it's only one tax lot. So it's, it's, there's really no way to say we're only going to review a portion of a tax lot. So it, it, it's, it just, the study will be the entire area, but the, um, the recommendation, if there is one, the recommendation will probably be limited to those areas that are obsolete. The, you know, the, bound, the wall is, as, as you're aware, <coughs> thriving. Yeah. It just, you know, it's well, doing well. It's just it's, the office building is over 50 years old, obsolete. Yeah. And there's some other properties towards the back there. Uh, I'm just not surprised you're looking at the whole mall because of vacancy rates and how malls are changing and who knows what the future of inside malls are going to be. So, uh, well, I mean, it's certainly broad enough to look at the whole thing. I just, I, you know, I'm probably prejudging a councilman and I shouldn't. That, that, okay. That's the whole purpose. The planner will take a look at it and make recommendations. Planning board will review those recommendations, make recommendations to this body, and then you can do... Um, you know, what you will once, once you have those recommendations. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Council President, just to Councilman Coyle, um, the Redevelopment Committee with Councilman Patil and the Councilman Lombardi and myself uh, discussed this in, in great detail. So uh, I guess Mr. Bignell will do his report and then you can review it and see what it encompasses. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Okay, we're still on the uh, Department of Public Works, A through D. From the Department of Recreation, A through C. From the Chief of Fire, Resolution A. From the Township Clerk, Resolution A. Okay. From the Council Member of the Planning Board, Mr. Sandelsky. Thank you, Council President. Um, from the uh, Edison Planning Board meeting of September 16th, 2019, uh, we had one resolution, P14-2019, Federal Business Centers, 140 Fieldcrest Avenue, and that was approved. Uh, new business, 
P22-2019 Samuel Frompkin, 125 Clearview Road, Block 390C, Lot 13.B3, was a proposal to expand an existing parking area construction warehouse where the parking lot property is primarily in Woodbridge and one and a half of the new spaces are in Edison. They have already received their Woodbridge Planning Board approval. Uh, there was a variance requested for lot impervious area coverage required 80%, proposed 84.24. The existing lot impervious coverage area is 83.94%. The building consists of a 7,000 square foot uh, of office and 38,000 square feet of warehouse. There are no pipelines within 75 feet of the area of disturbance and they will get the required waiver from the pipeline companies as a condition of their approval. There will be no change in lighting on the Edison side of the property. Preliminary and final approval was granted along with the variance for impervious coverage with the following conditions. Adherence to the engineer and planner's reports and providing us with the pipeline waivers. Resolution R-464-082019, redevelopment plan for Ray Katina Automotive Properties. The council had previously designated the, this property as an area in need of redevelopment and had submitted to the planning board for further study. A presentation by Mr. Bicknell cons consulting for the redevelopment plan for Ray Katina Automotive, Pro a presentation was made by Bicknell Consulting for the redevelopment plan for Ray Katina Autom Automotive Properties. Mr. Bicknell went through his lengthy report for the redevelopment of the Ray Katina properties, which are 16 individual lots located on two separate tracks and is referred to as the Ray Katina redevelopment area. The redevelopment plan separates the redevelopment area into two separate sub areas, sub area A on the Route 1 side, which consists of three lots, and sub area B, which consists of 13 lots, Main Street side. Mr. Bignell went through all the criteria of the redevelopment zone, including lighting, which after 10 p.m. will be required to be turned down. The planning board approved the redevelopment plan that Mr. Bignell outlined and sent the plan back to the council for approval. Resolution R414-08219, recommendations and comments for 21 Courtlet Street condominiums, block 203, lot 17. Uh, we sent it to the planning board to see if it was an area in need of, development, need of redevelopment. Mr. Bignell is working on the report and will report back to the planning board. The same thing with resolution R408-08219, recommendations and comments for 21 Courtland Street condominiums. Block 203, Lot 17, determining if the property satisfies the area for an area in need of rehabilitation. The board asked Mr. Bignell to research and see if the property meets the criteria of underutilization or over 50 plus years old and in need of repair. He will report back to the planning board at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, do we have ordinance 2051 and ordinance 2052? Any comments? Council President. Yes, sir. With regard to Ordinance 2052, uh, Mr. Northgrave, I think you indicated that there was a typo in there. Yeah, the Tree Fund Commission, I, I can't, I just didn't drill down on it. it. The Tree Fund Commission apparently should just say Environmental Commission. I don't think there's any need to reintroduce. It's, it's the rest of the ordinance is consistent that it would be the Environmental Commission that would be doing the review. Um, so that, yeah, that, I think that, that uh, change just needs to be made. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to discussion items. I'll start from my right, Councilman Coyle. <clears throat> Council President, um, I just have a few complaints to the administration. Um, one of the residents sent out an email for 103 Hickory. It's a uh, curb and paving in front of their residence. Edmond Street, I had several complaints again on the work that we discussed uh, to the engineer on the Route 1 lane striping. Apparently trucks are still coming down that area. I'm well aware this is a very challenging route, and I know the GPS is guiding trucks to that ramp and or they're miscalculating the turn prior to. Uh, they're asking if that road could be closed. Um, I said I would at least look into the process of whether that road could be closed. It seems to me near impossible, but I said I would ask. It would have to be enforcement by the PDA, so I'll have to talk to Chief in the morning. Okay. 
Um, it's signed, it's striped, you know, it's just people not following. Yeah. Um, also, I also had a email a few weeks ago on flooding on Amboy Avenue by a resident that lives on Pleasant. I reforwarded that email again. I also offered that resident to meet him out there during a storm uh, when it comes to deciding what the issue is. And I do look at the changes we made into this, a lot of the catch basins now are resistant of bottles. Uh, however, they clog up even faster. I don't know whether that change is causing more flooding because they quickly get clogged with leaves, whereas before it was an entire mouth opening up to catch all the water and the leaves. So I don't know what or where or why it's causing more what's, flooding. What's the address? It's on the corner of Pleasant and Amboy, uh, right by the Stewarts. Changing subjects sometime in the near future, perhaps before January. Um, I'd like to get a meeting with uh, DPW to s get a schedule, a seasonal schedule the following year. Mm -hmm. But also, more important, prior to the snow season, I'd like to know where we are with our manpower, truck power, amount of trucks, and classifications of drivers, and what the route of efficiency would be in the event of a snowstorm. Moving on to sewer and water, it, will there be a, a commission or a committee? I know the portfolio? mayor's work, working on that. Okay. I have nothing further, uh, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Dio. Thank you, Council President. Uh, two quick things. Uh, the swale on Abbott, between Abbott and Calvert. Uh, can we get an update on that, please? Uh, yes, the that area uh, was originally part of the various drainage two uh, plans that are going out to bid now. Uh, there are uh, extenuating uh, permitting that's required uh, in relation to that executing that part of the project, and therefore it's been broken apart. We're going to be taking these plans and forward they, uh, forwarding them over to the attorney and the, the concept plans uh, as well to the business administrator. And we'll have those over uh, by Wednesday. Thank you, sir. Uh, also, uh, a lot of talk about trees tonight. Important, important conversations because over the years, uh, I think we've done very well with trees and not so well at times. I agree that the residents who, in some cases, have a tree on their property and then the tree is cut down and they want to replace a tree, uh, I think it's a good idea that uh, we're able to help them and put a tree in there. We did that several years ago. We actually had a public service announcement on how the tree is planted and how to care for the tree at the time. I, I think that's a good thing. Uh, but one of the things we have to always be aware of is that these trees don't take care of themselves necessarily when they're first planted. These trees can take anywhere from two to five years to take before they can kind of be on their own. And I know in the past uh, we've planted trees, we've not been able to adequately water those trees or take care of those trees, and we've lost those trees. And I know right now, since we had, we haven't had any appreciable rain in weeks, and the forecast for the next two weeks, with the exception of possibly a light shower tonight, is no significant rainfall for the next two weeks. If you look around the town, you can, you can see it's starting to dry up, get pretty brown in spots. And the only thing I'd like to ask the administration is that if we have planted trees in certain areas recently, uh, we're going to need to water those trees if we haven't done so already. Uh, they won't last. Uh, you can see it right now. The, these t trees are stressed, even on our municipal boulevard here, if you look at these trees. I think they're all right. They've been there a while. But if you look around, you can see the stress on the trees because of the lack of water. So when we talk about trees and planting trees and 10,000 trees and $300,000 in the tree fund, every time you plant a tree, it's important that that tree is taken care of so it survives. 
And like I said in, with my initial statement, in some years we've done pretty well with that, in other years we haven't. Moving forward with this tree ordinance that we need to make sure that these trees are uh, properly ma maintained or taken care of once they are planted. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Councilman Patsio. Uh, Council President, uh, through Council President Morin, you know, thank you for responding to all my questions. I just saw my several requests you answered. The Baltic Street, yes, it's 100 feet. I understand it's going to cost some money to the township. But is there a way that county can help? Because half road they paved, it's not even a 200 feet I can, street. I can try to ask, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was something that they did and our ordinance right. only requires the, um, to the halfway mark. So I, I can ask them, but okay. uh, I, just can't, I, I just can't make it part of the contract, it's too late. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, question, is the citizen request rolled out to all the departments or it is only for DPW? All. All? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do we know the, the paving schedule? When it's going to end, the current paving schedule? No, um, we have weekly updates going out. They're on the website. Okay. Um, I'd say probably another month or two. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilman Joshi. Yes, a few things. Uh, the first being the Stelton Community Center. I went on Facebook Live because uh, the Director of Recreation, with Maureen's permission, allowed me to uh, go in there. And the reason why I did that was just because I wanted to start the conversation. Uh, I think there's been a lot of speculation as to what we can and cannot do or what we should do related to the Stelton Community Center. Um, as of now, I've, I saw that about 3,700 people saw my video and uh, more than 1,000 of them watched two minutes of it. So it's, it's a heavy discussion right now, but like I said, the reason why I went inside was because I wanted people to know what it actually looks like in the inside. Uh, I personally don't think that the best use of that property would be a school only because it fits, you know, there's four classrooms on the bottom, four classrooms on top. Perhaps if, you know, there's a few more. Uh, not to mention the fact that I also said this in the video, it is on the Rossi, um, you know, it was also mentioned earlier too. So it's, it's perhaps the concept of it is, is good, but when you look at what it's actually able to do, uh, I, don't, I don't think it, it school is the best use of it. But that being said, the reason why I uh, went in was so that we can at least start the conversation so that we can figure out as a community what is, how we can best utilize it. Uh, second thing, Ms. Uh, Maureen, the Inman and Grove intersection, was that taken care of? The, uh, the light that needed to be, it was for the seniors. No, I know what it is. Um, okay. There's a 12, le uh, 12 week lead time on when we okay. can get that. So right now it's down in purchasing and we're okay. deciding between two vendors. Okay. But we're working on that, yep. Thanks. Uh, I should have mentioned this in the point of light. There was a drug prevention and vaping discussion that was held privately uh, by a pediatrician, Dr. Shukla, and there were decent amount, it was a packed basement. It was last night, it was a very good, healthy, product, uh, you know, productive conversation. I think we, you know, we need to look into one of the things that a school board member brought to our attention, or at least my attention, was just whether we have the ability to restrict uh, where vaping areas are sold. And that's also something I just wanted to look into, uh, or, or the, the vapes are sold. I know the CDC, I know the, from a federal and state standpoint, they're considering banning it altogether until there's any discussion. But it's the more so the, the conversation, let me just clarify, it was, it was so that there can be certain areas where vapes are sold. So for example, 7-Eleven being right next to a school, should, it can, is it even possible for a municipality to regulate you know, within a X amount of feet, whether something like that can be sold or not. Um, that was part of the discussion that a board of ed member had brought to my attention just yesterday. I, I don't, I don't. Yeah, know, I have to take yeah. a look at it. it there, there may be state preemption issues, but I'm thinking maybe we could do it through zoning. Okay. Um, but that's not, that's not a quick fix. That, yeah. That requires a whole series of steps. We'll, I'll take a look at it and let you know. Okay. And 
I did attend a Board of Education meeting, uh, and I asked, I know that I'm not on the Board of Education uh, Liaison Committee or the Overcrowding Committee, but one request that I did make to the Board of Education was to send us the overcrowding report. I know that that was being discussed for the past couple of years. Have, has any council member received an overcrowding report? Uh, Councilor President, uh, Councilman Joshi, I believe uh, the last presentation that was given by the architect and might be the planner there, uh, uh, that was a, the open meeting that was uh, scheduled to discuss about the proposal. And I believe that presentation is available on the Board of Ed website. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> but you never gave it to the council, right? You never, like under the reports, you never gave it to us. Because that's not the, the council committee. That is something Board of Ed submitted, you know, created their own committee. Well, you were on that committee, though, right? They, they asked me to be part of it. So it was more of an interaction session, and after that... So you, the you just were, you didn't, never got that final report. They never gave it that's to you. That's correct. Is it... Uh, apart from the PowerPoint, is it available like as a PDF that we can just all get? Uh, we can definitely ask okay. to the board of it. All right. Because yeah. uh, I, st I still would like to see that report. Although I'm not in the community, I think it's Correct. something that all of us should have. That was <laughs> Council Medeal, we didn't get that either, did we? No. No. Okay. <laughs> right? I, I just think I, what I said at the board of ed meeting, it was, I mean, it was a... It was the, the, I, I just think it would be better if all of us formally got it I think we can make better sound judgments uh, with it. Yeah, I would say go ahead and request it from the Board of Ed. Uh, okay. Either way, it's a public record. So. Okay. And uh, the last two things. The one thing that I'm working on uh, with Melissa from the administration and JLA from Health uh, is the census. It's coming up next year. And I can't stress that the census and our responses to it are probably one of the biggest, most impactful pieces of data that we can take part in. Uh, I am going to, I'm on that committee. Uh, I was, uh, I've had, you know, a couple of meetings with Melissa as well as uh, the census committee uh, or the census bureau and Jay Elliott. I'm gonna make a pretty big uh, active effort so that we keep getting, no matter, whether, regardless of your immigration status, regardless of your political affiliation, no matter where you live, ev this is something that every single person that l resides in Edison should be taking part in. So I'm going to make a pretty big active effort in terms of making people aware uh, in the next coming weeks. And we're going to need a lot of volunteers. The Census Bureau, when we met, they told us that they still had about 3,000 jobs available for our district. And just so that you're aware, they gave us, uh, they gave me this data because I'm, I'm gonna start pushing it more. The, depending on how many people live in a certain area, it impacts, the, the, the Census Bureau comes out with $670 billion to allocate somewhere, uh, of which 22 billion New Jersey received in 2016. So what this directly impacts and how you respond to the census uh, impacts everything from student loans, lunch programs, breakfast programs, school breakfast programs, uh, state CDBG, uh, you know, drug prevention, substance abuse programs. A lot of funding that we end up getting from federal and state aid comes from the data that's given in the census. And what we learned was 17%, Edison had a 17% uh, non-responsive rate on the last census which means that 17% of Edison was not accounted for. If you stop and think about that, that's an enormous number. That can push Edison from being the fifth largest municipality to perhaps the fourth largest municipality, which would impact how much money we get. So we're only going to have about two months in spring to get all the responses in. But I, like I said, I'm going to keep stressing this because it is the biggest thing in our, our decade that impacts all of us. The last thing, uh, the Edison Light Transit. Now, about slightly more than 10 years ago, I was researching uh, about different transportation programs. And the at the time, slightly more than 10 years ago, we had a very, uh, I shouldn't say very, we had an active 
ELT, Edison Light Transit Program. And it would be based out of the senior center, which was the senior center that I used to volunteer out of when I was 14. And it would go to certain routes throughout Edison Township. The reason why I'm bringing this up now is because I know that there are still grants avail that have become uh, available once again from a federal and state level. And I think that we should look into a recommendation that I had 10 years ago, but I'm just reviving it now. Basically, the concept is we have, we all know we have a big issue with congestion in, in our streets. Uh, a recommendation that I made was reviewing or having a traffic study that can see whether the ELT, if we were to revive that program, let's just say, for example, we know that Fridays or thir Thursdays or Fridays after school from J.P. Stevens or Addison High, there's a lot of students that go towards the mall. So instead of having cars that you know, crowd our streets during these certain time periods, I wanted to look into mass transit. And along those routes, if we can incorporate different businesses as well, then it would be better for all of us. Uh, just to address some of the, the congestion that we have. So I, I continue to, you know, I'll, I'll look into that, but I want to have that discussion with the administration as well. That's all I had for now. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Councilman Lombardi. Thank you, Council President. Um, I should have brought this up during um, committee uh, updates, um, but and I brought this up a few months ago, the landfill committee. I sit on the landfill committee, and as you know, as I stated a few months ago, we were looking into an alternative capping method. Um, and we talk about the scarcity of land. If the DEP approves this alternative capping method, it could save the town millions of dollars in capping the landfill, and it could also uh, give the land an additional uh, 20 acres of so of additional land that we can use and we could decide what to put there whether it be recreation whether it be solar maybe a little bit of both um, and I'm happy to report that the town is investigating this further and we're going to be setting up a meeting with our consultant um, our engineers Mazer um, the group that's looking to do this project um, so that we can possibly do a redesign submit it to the DEP for approval so I'm looking forward to that meeting happening um, also, I wanted to briefly ask uh, Mr. Elliott, who's here. Uh, I know a few months ago, it's been a while, but we discussed or we had the presentation with regard to the deer, and we had discussed the possibility of doing some sort of recreational type uh, program to minimize or mitigate the number of deers that are coming into town. And I believe that we had discussed at the last meeting that because the season starts January 1 to February 1, mm -hmm. we we're going to look at what the permitting application is with the state. And I was just curious as to the status. I of know that. the consultant was looking into it. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, follow up with that. I also uh, have spoken with Council President uh, Gomez that there's a, um, another, another group that has asked to do a short presentation about uh, the they feel that there is a non-lethal way that uh, can be done economically. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work with uh, Council President to find out a, a, a day where he can come in and, ma and make that presentation as well. Too. So we, this way we've, we've heard from all, all aspects. Uh, at the same time, I'll ask our consultant to develop, continue to develop the, uh, the application with the state, again, just for viability. Okay. And also, Mr. Elliott, um, you and I had discussed on a couple of occasions an updated ordinance with regard to the reporting from condominium and, a car and apartment complexes with regard to the CCOs and I've, so forth I've worked and so on that and I'll, I'll have a draft that to you shortly just to, uh, to effectively have them report to us on an annual basis as to what the turnover is. Thank you, sir. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you, sir. Councilman. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, Mike, I know you updated us on the Kenmore Road, and I guess we're going to get to the bottom of that, right? What's going on and where that is in the uh, in the queue? Uh, how about the park completions? How are we doing with that? Uh, we're we're continuing to uh, work with the contractor to have them complete the project. Uh, we we interact with them daily, uh, with the, you know regarding inspections and schedules, um, and we're. We're optimistic that uh, everything will be wrapped up by the end of October, you know, such that uh, there won't be an issue with the uh, grass growing uh, in the spring when everyone really starts to uh, use the parks again. 
So everything will be done, the uh, swing sets, everything will be in place, the sliding boards and everything else, the pour in place. That is, that is our intent, right? That, that is our intent and, you know, and our goal uh, to have everything done. Uh, and, and hopefully the, the, the contractor will, will meet uh, uh, this standard. Right, okay. How about the old post light? What are we doing with that? That whole signalization thing. Are, that we're are you referring about. to uh, uh, old post and one? Old post and route one, right? Yeah, that, that's something that, uh, that we're, uh, I just wanna make sure I have the question correct. This is old post uh, uh, and route one. Are you talking about the signalization that the DOT recently completed? Correct. Okay, I spoke with the DOT about this and they, that area, uh, as far as their, that project is concerned, that phase of the project is 100% complete. So, so if it has to be adjusted, who's gonna do that? This, it's, a, it's owned by the DOT and it will have to be adjusted by the DOT. So it's not something that's, so we, we should definitely you know, communicate with them and say, hey, you know, we have identified uh, problems here in our municipal streets right. uh, that are being impacted by your properties, you know, your right. light, and, and here's the police reports, here's the accidents, and we should continue right. to engage with them. And, uh, you know, that those are one of the, uh, the proper engineering term warrants for adjusting a uh, signal. I, I think in one of the turning uh, cues, I think there's only like 16 seconds. And that's, recently we had a, uh, a project at the Hearts Mountain site and the engineer said the same thing, that it needs, something needs to be done with that. So that, that's what I'm talking about. It, are, so you're referring to board testimony? Well, not, no, because I asked them specifically about okay. it. What are they doing about the signalization? He says, I was driving up Route 1 and I noticed I the same you. thing, All right. you know? So I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, Menlo Engineering brought it up. I mean, they were doing the testimony for the project. Okay. But um, uh, it's important that we get that done because people shouldn't be waiting, having only 16 seconds to get through a light. You know what I mean? I, 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 I understand. Uh, and sometimes I just want to say for everyone's benefit, you know, we have the experience of the, of the worst part of it. So that, that may be the worst part of it is that, is that turning motion. Right. Uh, but. Uh, perhaps overall, that was the best solution for the intersection. So meaning that, you know, if there's gonna be someone that's gonna suffer, so to speak, out of that whole traffic interaction, all four, uh, uh, you know, corners of that intersection, that may have been the uh, solution. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll look into it. We'll continue to uh, uh, speak with the DOT about that. And I'll, I'll bring it up again uh, to them. And I, I don't think I'll have something by this Wednesday, but you know, hopefully in the next uh, week or two, I will have a response from them. I'll write this down right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Jay, anything on our blue tarp towel see when it's coming down? Okay, all right. And so um, we spoke a little bit about overcrowding tonight. Uh, Councilman Joshi spoke about it, and I'd like to speak a little bit about it myself. Um, and uh, so 60% of the total tax bill that Edison homeowners pay goes to the Board of Education. I don't know if everybody knows that. Town Hall only gets 28% or 138 million. The Board of Ed collects like 252 million. Edison Town Hall provides our 103,000 residents with police and fire protection, collects garbage and recycling, handles road maintenance and snow removal, provides senior citizen and health services, provides recreation services and handles construction code, engineering, planning, zoning, and so much more. 80% of Town Hall's 138 million pays for our personnel and their benefits. The Edison Board of Ed has two important jobs, to educate 17,000 children at the best possible cost to taxpayers and maintain safe school buildings. Some of our school board, some of them, are failing miserably at both of those jobs. Worse, school board members Jerry Shee and Richard Brescher keep trying to shift the blame for their failures onto Edison Town Hall. This must stop. They must take responsibility for their failures. For example, the school board did nothing to improve school security for one full year. Parents wanted sworn officers to protect each school, but the Board of Ed gave them security guards instead. 
How did the Board of Ed allow $1.4 million for police protection to disappear? Where did the money go? Officer Shannon, Chief Bryant, Maureen, Mr. Deal, Councilman Deal, we met. They did a great presentation, gave us 80% coverage. And I don't know what's going on with that. And they're claiming that there's a 17% charge surcharge, that's what we're getting, that we have to charge because of the incidents that happen with off-duty police officers. The people of Edison decided that the school board should be separate and an elected board. The school board is wasting the taxpayers' money. They receive the majority of our tax dollars, and then they keep asking the township for more. For two years, a joint Board of Ed Township committee, directed by Jerry Shee, Richard Brescher, Ralph Errico, and Councilman Patil was on there, supposedly studied school overcrowding. And today, Councilman Patil told us that that is on the, uh, the website, which we didn't know, because no one received it. Clerk, you didn't receive that, did you? Did you? You didn't receive that report, right? Okay. Supposedly, it's on the website, so hopefully we'll get a copy of that. Over the past two years, the Edison Board of Ed got millions of dollars refunded by the state of New Jersey. Our residents were also taxed for those amounts. So where did those state refunds go? Why didn't the Board of Ed give that money back to the Edison taxpayers? I understand the Edison Board of Ed is sitting on another 11 million with the state refunds. That's about 19 million. What is the board going to do with all that money? I keep hearing from parents about the sad condition of our schools, filthy restrooms at James Madison Middle School, no air conditioning in most of the classrooms, just in the administration's office, broken windows, peeling paint in auditoriums. Where's the routine maintenance for our schools? Our school board is not being held accountable to Edison Township taxpayers or voters. The Board of Ed changed the date of the school board election to intentionally avoid taxpayer scrutiny of its budget. That's not democracy. Meanwhile, Richard Brescher and Jerry Shee come to council meetings to ask Town Hall to repay school parking lots, to pay for other school routine maintenance that the Board of Ed should do with all of its money. Richard, Richard Brescher and Jerry Shee come to township council meetings to demand that